In this training video, I'm going to talk about the Explore view in Scuba. And the Explore view can be thought of as the self-service query builder where you have complete control over the types of things that you build and the types of questions that you answer and how you visualize them against your data. And what I'm going to do is talk about all of the different buttons and what they mean and how you can use them and then also provide a few examples of how to build some some very simple queries. So starting in the top here, um, we'll see this drop down menu, which is the data set selector. So if I choose between these, you'll see in this cluster, there's multiple different data sets. In your cluster, there could just be one data set. But when you choose this, whatever you select, whether you're building a measure um, or choosing uh, what to split things by, these things in these drop downs will be limited to whichever data set you're building your queries against. So starting on the left pane here is a measure. And so the way you can think about a measure is determining what it is you want to count or what it is that you want to aggregate, average, and so on and so forth. So a little bit later in the video, I'll talk specifically about what some of these things mean, and I'll build uh, example queries around it. Uh, but in general, this is where you're going to define your query. You're going to define whether you're counting unique users, whether you're counting uh, how many people perform certain actions a certain number of times, defining things like daily active, monthly active users, and so on. This measure here is where you'll be able to define that. And on the bottom here, you'll notice this measure tab. So there is no limit to the number of measures that you can add, right? In this one calculation, you might want to count unique users. Whereas in this calculation, you might want to count the number of events that those unique users are performing in your tool or on your service. So moving down here to split by, for those of you that are familiar with SQL, um, split by is equivalent to group by, right? So if you, for example, had users and they were performing different actions, but you wanted to split that up by the different regions that those users live in, you would use the split by tool down here to dimensionalize the query and it will visually represent itself split up by whatever it is you're dimensionalizing it by. Um, moving down here to this uh, time window, this is where you're going to choose the time range that you choose your query to run over. So in my first video, for those of you that watched the intro, we talk about sequences of time and how Scuba is a time series data warehouse. Well, every question you ask is asked in the context of time. How many users did I have today? Or how many users did I have in the last 30 minutes or year, etc. And you'll select from drop downs or be able to use type ahead to choose the different time ranges that you select from. Down here is a time options window, which I'm going to cover in the next video um, because it can go further in depth than I would want to cover in this, this video. But in general, this just allows you to toggle the amount or time ranges that are represented in a different in a time view visualization so there's a lot of flexibility especially with compare to you can compare different weeks against each other uh, but like i said there'll be a separate video for this this uh, feature here and then lastly in the query definition window um, you'll see this pre filter this is a way that you can apply a single set of filters um, to all of the measures in your definition. So you could have a pre-filter that you apply and then build several measures out and those measures will have the criteria or filters defined down here applied to every one of those measures. So moving down here, um, if I press clear all, this will wipe everything out and create a new blank definition for me to begin building with. Um, when you are done building or defining your definition and you press go it will begin to run a new query um, and then down on the bottom right here you'll see a history tab so if I click on the history tab I'll be able to pull up any old query that I've run or built in the past 
and be able to take a look at you know what what was that that I was doing um, you know a few days ago or, or, or so on and so forth and you know it's kind of a way that you can uh, go back to work that you were were working on earlier maybe in that day or that week and then at the bottom here is a sampling button so you can toggle between sampled or all um, sampled is a very statistically accurate way to make a projection against all of your data and we recommend using the samples button um, when you're just building out queries and sort of testing things um, and then when you find a source of truth or you know a query that is going to be something you want to pin to a dashboard or use as a source of truth you have the option as running it uh, running it as uh, an all query so moving on up here we have the different visualizations so um, if I select this one this is our time view which was the first visualization we were looking at it represents time on the x-axis and it shows how things trend over time um, there's also a table view where you can see the breakdown of things in a table um, there's uh, a Sankey visualization which this is very much so tied to our flows and funnels uh, functionality but there are uh, examples that I will go through with Sankey in different uh, a different video there's a number view if you just want a very discrete number like what is the number of events that happened over a certain period of time um, there's bar as well and then pie view and line view so line view is another video that I'll uh, go into depth about what it is and how to use it um, but in general it's very useful for queries around retention and stuff like that so moving to the right you'll notice this pin button if you've defined a query and it's exactly what you want or maybe you're halfway through you know building something and you don't want to stop your work uh, because maybe you have to to leave or whatever um, you can decide to pin this to either an existing dashboard or you can select new and you can then create a brand new dashboard my new board and you can save it and it will pin whatever query you're on whatever state it's in to that dashboard which you can always go back to and then dig back into the query um, you know at a later date in the top right corner as well there is a share button so you can um, you know take this query in whatever state it's currently in and copy this and send this over to another coworker and they should be able to have access to it and be able to explore it or see whatever interesting insights you came across um, below this is chart options so chart options are going to be unique meaning that what is in the chart options display window is going to be unique to whichever query or visualization you're running so in this case you'll see for the for the time view we have the ability to show multiple axes or draw straight lines between data points if I go to a bar view you'll see there's the option to stack some of the bars or display values at the top of the bars and so on and so forth so whenever you're building a query uh, be cognizant that you know you can go to this chart options like if you want to format something as a percent or if you want to stack something that you're splitting by um, you can use the bar visualization here or the chart options rather uh, below this is a legend so if I were to split by region let's say and run this query you'll see in the legend the different options that are available these are also interactive as well so um, it differs for each visualization um, but you can from this legend choose things like hide US and Canada and it'll go ahead and apply those changes to the visualization um, or you can bring it back so <clears throat> scrolling down here um, for the last component or feature actually there's two more um, on the bottom here you'll notice a time slider so in this case I'm running a query from seven days ago to now or this day um, and down here you'll see where that is visually represented right it's March 27th um, to April and let's say I wanted to you know 
move this query date to a larger time range or in this little time view I see there's a high amount of activity or a spike in my event volume at a certain date range I can just drag this and drop it and you'll notice that now the time range goes from November 16th to April 6th here um, and then again if I wanted to shrink that it'll apply those changes as well so that's just something that's interesting to note and then lastly down here in the samples view um, if I expand this down this gives me a row level uh, example of what the data itself in this query looks like on the back end, right? So there's a timestamp, a user ID that's performing the actions and they are in a different region, right? So in this case, we're splitting by region, so it brought region in here. So it just gives you a bit of a view as to what the data looks like. And if you press this gear here, you can actually start incorporating other columns, right? I can say bring in vendor and gender and device type. And once I apply that, it will now bring those different things in, right? So, um, you know, it's very, it's a, it's a useful tool to explore your data model on the fly. You can also download these as a CSV. So, you know, if you wanted to take a different look at it, you have that option. So what I'm going to move on to now is just building a very simplistic query. So in this case, um, in this definition, we have measure one, and I'm going to clear all here. And in this case, we're counting events filtered to all events, split by none from the seven days ago to now time window. And so if I just run that, what it's going to give me here is measure one, and it's going to give me the value that it's computing for, the count of the number of events that are filtered to all events, so it'll be literally every row that occurred in this time range. And now if I wanted to change this, <clears throat> I have a whole bunch of different options. I can select from this drop-down menu um, because maybe I want to be summing something or getting an average of maybe time that it took for a user to do action A or B, like if you're dealing with a flow. Um, or maybe you want to get mode or minimum maximum what's the maximum price that we sell items for right or what's the minimum price that we sell um, and so on and so forth percentile is very similar to that as well um, or what is the first action that a user does um, when they when they uh, start as a customer what is the last action a user does before they churn so I encourage everyone to start playing around with these and, and take a look at those but for the most part, you're going to be using a count of things. So in this case, you can choose what you are specifically counting. So in this case, we were counting events. Uh, but now maybe I want to count users, right? An individual user, user or actor can have any number of actions, right? We see that there's 5 million events, but it's users or actors in this case that are performing those events, right? So if I go on to Amazon.com, I can click on any different number of buttons and so on and so forth and I can perform n number of events or actions in a day so in this case we have 140,000 actors that are performing those 5 million events right and so this is a way to begin you know filtering or defining what you want so in this case maybe I want to look at uh, the users specifically that perform the action of purchase so as you see that I did right there I went to the filter to section in the measure and instead of filtering to all user actors I can now choose from the columns that are in my data set so in this case I know that we have a column called action so I can either select that from the drop down menu here or I can just start typing action and by clicking that it'll show me all of the available types of actions that live under that column right in this case I want to choose purchase because I want to see users that purchase and you'll notice here is a matches drop down if I select that you'll see there's a whole bunch of different options right so in this case I want it to match purchase but if I wanted to do something like maybe there's a, a string value um, and I just want the values that contain um, or start with um, you know C or something like that right I can go ahead and elect those different options and it will go ahead and retrieve anything in this measure that's that's uh, defined down to this filter set so in this case I'm going to choose matches and purchase and then I'll run the query 
and now you'll see that the number of users that purchased is 29,400. So what I can do now is um, let's switch this over to a bar view. And what I'm going to now do is incorporate split by. So in this case, um, let's say I want to look at the different regions that my users are purchasing in. Right here we have measure one and measure one is giving us that 29,404 value because we said we wanted it to give us a count of users that had purchased in the last seven days and so this is that value uh, but now with split by I can say well I know that all of my users don't live in the same place right they, they obviously live all over the world so in this case I can again use type ahead to select the column and I'm going to choose region here and then I'm going to go ahead and press go and so now you'll see because I'm using bar view I can see how the breakdown of those different regions of the world are computed across every single region that we're collecting data for and so um, you know this is at a very high level um, you know a way to begin querying and to start querying there's a whole bunch of additional advanced functionality um, like adding in other measures um, and messing with the chart options so if you have additional questions about you know uh, further querying or deeper querying for these different visualizations or getting more complex with the queries I highly encourage everyone to watch the additional videos that we have thanks for watching I'll talk to you soon.